Hey guys, I made this video to help us understand what reperfusion injury is. And so I'm going to take you through it point by point. So what is reperfusion injury? Well, first we need to understand what ischemia is, and that is reduced blood supply. So if you have a myocardial infarction, for example, where there's something blocking an artery that's going towards the heart, then that's gonna cut off the blood supply. Within 60 seconds, you're gonna have, your heart is gonna have difficulty contracting and it's gonna to start to turn pale. After three to five minutes, the myocardium stops contracting completely. So your heart stops beating. Now, why does that happen? Well, it's a lack of ATP. So let's think about the role of ATP within the cell. We know that the mitochondria are responsible for making ATP, and we know that the sodium potassium pump is a really important part of the cell that uses ATP uh, more than any other function within the cell. So if you'll remember from microbiology that the mitochondria make ATP with the electron transport chain in what we call aerobic respiration. So you can see that in the electron transport chain, which is located on the mitochondrial membrane, there's a five-step process where NADH drops off some hydrogen ions, and those hydrogen ions uh, go all, through all five parts of the electron transport chain, and then at the end, they produce a bunch of ATP, 38, up to 38. Um, and we know that oxygen is the final hydrogen receptor because oxygen loves hydrogen ions. It has, um, it's got two, uh, two spaces for electrons in its outer valent shell, so it loves to pick up hydrogens to balance itself out. So at the end of this process, we have um, aerobic respiration. Now, if we don't have enough oxygen um, and we can't use oxygen for respiration, what does the cell do? Well, it can use aerobic respiration, but that's pretty inefficient, and you don't get as much ATP out of that, maybe only two ATPs. So without oxygen, you don't have enough ATP to run the sodium-potassium pump. There's also the sodium-calcium exchange, which is really important for keeping calcium um, from entering the intracellular environment. So without oxygen to power the electron transport chain, we see an increase in sodium, increase in calcium, and an increase in water within the cell. Now, where did the water come from? Well, you'll remember that sodium, when sodium enters the cell, the water is gonna follow. So without the sodium potassium pump constantly pumping the sodium out of the cell, it's gonna remain within the cell, and the water is then gonna come into the cell and cause a lot of swelling. Also, the potassium is gonna be leached out of the cell. So when that happens, when the cell begins to swell, you're gonna see that the endoplasmic reticulum dilates, the ribosome, ribosomes are gonna detach and, from the endoplasmic reticulum, and that's gonna cause a loss of protein synthesis. Now, up until this point, the damage that this has caused is still reversible. So if you were to reintroduce oxygen back into the cell at this point, a lot of this could be reversed. However, if vacuoles start to form, if the lysosomes swell, and if the mitochondria swell, then it causes irreversible damage into the cell. And I didn't write it on here, but I should have added that if the membrane becomes weak and starts to swell, then that's also a key sign of irreversible damage. What is the result of that? Well, it's gonna be major chaos within the cell which is going to eventually lead to apoptosis and necrosis, which is programmed cell death for apoptosis, and necrosis is just premature cell death in this case. So remember, reversible damage doesn't, irreversible damage doesn't occur until the, until the cell membrane is compromised and swollen, the lysosomes are swollen, the mitochondria are swollen, and the vacuoles have started to form in the cell. Now, reperfusion injury occurs if you were to restore blood flow to the site of damage, to the, to the injured cell. So ischemia reperfusion injury happens because normally in your cell, you have a lot of antioxidants. 
But when the cell started to swell, the antioxidants um, were gone. The cell couldn't produce any antioxidants anymore, and the antioxidants disappeared out of the cell. So if then we were to reintroduce blood flow to the cell, because remember before we said this, it was blocked, so the blood couldn't reach the cell, and with that the oxygen couldn't reach the cell, because remember oxygen travels in the hemoglobin of red blood cells. Then if we were, if we were to remove that blockage, and reintroduce blood flow, then the blood would be able to drop oxygen back off of the cell. But if there's no antioxidants there to pick it up, then it's going to cause major stress on the cell. Oxidative stress is what we call it. Because oxygen, when it doesn't have any antioxidants, is a free radical. Remember how it has those two unpaired electrons that are looking to fill the valence shell? Well, it's looking for those electrons, and when it can't find them, it can cause pretty serious damage to the cell. So normally you've got this phospholipid bilayer membrane, but when, um, when oxygen acts as a free radical, then it, it destroys the cell membrane, and it creates these holes within the cell membrane, and it just tears it apart, which again leads to necrosis. Now, a couple of things that I didn't put on this chart that I saw in the book is, and I'm not entirely sure how some of this works, but the um, cells, white blood cells are especially uh, sensitive to reperfusion injury. Um, also, reperfusion injury could cause inflammation. Um, and I believe there's one other thing that the book, there are two other things that the book mentioned. When calcium enters the cell, when you reintroduce oxygen back into the cell, calcium also gets reintroduced back into the cell. And I wasn't entirely sure how that happened, but when it does, the additional calcium causes more damage to the cell and speeds up that process of necrosis. Um, so anyways, you may have to read the book for some of this, but hopefully this gives you a basic idea of what reperfusion injury is. And just to go over it one more time, when you reintroduce blood flow, back into a cell that has been without blood that has been without oxygen for a while it can cause additional damage and actually speed up cell death because of that oxidative stress on the cell because there's no antioxidants to prevent the free radicals from destroying the cell good luck and thanks